Hi, I'm Mike Davis. I'm a professor of exercise physiology at Oklahoma State University. Every year during the winter, we come up to study the world's greatest endurance athletes, racing sled dogs. Racing sled dogs have an aerobic capacity two to three times that of humans. They can burn 12,000 calories per day, and they do so by running hundreds of miles, averaging 100 to 150 miles day after day after day. The dogs have the same basic responses to exercise as humans do. During the first day of a 100 mile run, they'll deplete their muscle glycogen, they'll deplete their muscle triglycerides, they'll have blood-borne evidence of muscle damage. Instead of fatiguing like humans do, these dogs will continue to run, and they'll run and run and run without getting tired. How they go from a fatigue-prone physiology to a fatigue-resistant physiology in as fast as 24 to 48 hours is a subject of our work. Well, the goal of this study is to determine how muscle responds to exercise and becomes more capable, more conditioned of, for performing the exercise. We all know that in order to get fit, we go out and exercise. And something about the exercise causes the muscle to change and become better at performing whatever work that we've been practicing. Uh, but we don't know exactly how that happens. Uh, this study it hopes to at least unlock some of those uh, some of those secrets. In order to get the information that we need, we have to actually look at the muscle on a microscopic and molecular level, and so we have to take a little bitty piece of it out of the dog. Um, we do that by very lightly knocking them out. Uh, we use a drug called propofol that's very safe, very rapid, both uh, uh, on induction and also on recovery. So the dogs uh, go to sleep smoothly. Um, they're not very deeply asleep. We couldn't actually do surgery on them because they're not that far out of it. Uh, but they will lay still long enough long enough for us to get a muscle biopsy, which is a piece of muscle that's about the size of a paper match. Uh, we take that uh, muscle from the hind leg using a biopsy needle that's designed specifically to do that. And then after taking two or three little pieces, we glue the uh, hole that we made closed with uh, medical super glue, um, stop administering the anesthetic, and we simply lay them on the floor. Within about five to ten minutes, the dogs are back on their feet. They're completely awake. They're ready to eat. Um, they could go out and run. They could go out and run uh, about an hour after doing the uh, muscle biopsy. Um, it's not as painful as doing the muscle biopsies on humans, even though we're using the same technique, because by uh, knocking the dog out, they relax enough that the, uh, the muscle is loose and you do less damage to it when you take the little, uh, little biopsy sample out of it. We freeze the muscle sample and take it back to the lab in Oklahoma. Um, there, uh, it's going to be ground up and a number of uh, different analyses done on it. Uh, probably the most important one is we want to uh, analyze how much energy reserve the muscle has in the form of muscle glycogen and muscle triglyceride. That gives us a basic idea of how metabolically stressed that muscle was at the time we took it. Low muscle glycogen means that it's uh, been metabolically stressed, it's been using its reserves up, and so we expect to see some enzymes activated and some genes activated to correct that. Uh, you have to stress the muscle at least a little bit in order to get it to start to adapt. There's no reason for the muscle to adapt if it doesn't uh, if it's already perfectly capable of doing whatever work you've done. So the phrase that uh, athletic trainers use uh, frequently of no pain, no gain uh, may be a little bit dramatic, but the gist of it is true. You have to stress the muscle in order to get it to adapt to the exercise. We're going to use these muscle uh, biopsies to determine how stressed the muscle was and assuming that it has been stressed by the exercise runs that the dogs have done, which genes have been turned on, which enzymes have been activated, and what are the processes that are going on 
that uh, that will cause the muscle to become better at running down a snow-covered trail. It's for both the sled dogs and for humans because the uh, pathways and, uh, and and formulas that we determine from the dogs will almost certainly have uh, similar uh, similar findings in humans. Uh, the research is being funded by the Diabetes Action Foundation which is a, a private foundation interested in finding solutions to obesity and type 2 diabetes. Uh, in humans, we know that exercise can help reverse type 2 diabetes, but we don't know how, just like we don't know how exercise results in increased fitness. Uh, but by studying the muscle responses to exercise, we may be able to understand how exercise alters the uh, or reverses the uh, problems of type 2 diabetes and in doing so perhaps find a more effective way of treating that human disease. So the dogs are contributing both to sled dog uh, physiology as well as human physiology.